In the circuit below, the total power dissipated by the 48 by the circuit is 48 watts. What is the value of the unknown resistor? What is the value of the current that flows through the 12 ohm resistor? Okay, so basically we want to find this value. And we want to find the current that's flowing through that resistor. So the first thing we're going to try and do here is, hmm. So let's see, we're going to look at this 48 watts. So if we, we know that power equals IV, which is the same as V squared over R, which is I squared R. And so we can use these to find what the total resistance should be. Yes, and there, you can convert between these through Ohm's law, where I equals V over R, or V equals IR. You can write it however you like. And now, not all these equations are true for all circuits, but for this circuit, you can assume they are. And the one we're going to look at will be this one and, well, I guess power. So power, which is, so if we rearrange this for resistance, this will be resistance for the total circuit. This will be V squared, which is voltage, over P, which is power. So we will have 18 squared over 48. I don't know if that gives us a normal number or not. I'm going to try this out real quick. So we'll do 6 times 3 times 6 times 3, which is 18 squared. 48 is 6 times 8, so something like this. Uh, the 6s will cancel. Um, divide both of these by 2. And so we have oh, 27 over 4. Okay. And that will be the total ohms of the whole circuit put together. So now we have that. So now I'm going to try and write this as an equivalent circuit. So I'm going to start by writing out that R total Move this a little bit closer. <clears throat> Equals, I'm just going to call this R, because I don't want to write unknown every time. Plus, um, and I'm going to call this R equivalent, because I'm going to make some sort of equivalent circuit out of that. And so from this, we, we know what R total is. We know what R total is. We don't know what this is, but we can find this. And so what we want to do is we start reducing this to an equivalent circuit. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to redraw it a whole bunch of times. So the first part I'm going to redraw is the top part. So the top part will be 3 ohms, same as it is. And then the next one is going to be 3 ohms as well. So normally the way you do circuits in parallel is, this is parallel, the parallel, 1 over the R equivalence parallel, will be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Well, when the two resistors are the same, the equivalent resistance is just going to be half of, of one of them. So half of 6 is going to be 3. So I'm just going to do that quickly. And we still have this 4 over 12. So I'm going to reduce the 4 over 12 real quick. I'm going to do it over here on my sidebar. Maybe scooch down over here. I know this makes my work extra messy. Purple. So 1 over 4. So I'm going to do 1 over R. I'm going to call this 4 and 12 equals 1 fourth plus 1 over 1 twelfth Com uh, common denominator so we'll do 12 multiply both sides by 3 plus 1 over 12 gives us 4 over 12 so r 4 1 12 parallel is uh, let's see this is 1 third so this will also be 3 ohms very convenient so this will be 3 ohms here and then we're going to add that to a 7 ohm. I guess I probably could have left off the ohms, sort of implied. So now these are a little bit simpler. So now we can redraw this again as 6 ohms, because we're combining 2 in series. And then we're going to have 10 ohms. Okay, and so now we're going to do these in parallel. So 1 over resistance... 610 equals, that's just my little shorthand, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 10. We're going to do a common denominator. We could do 30. Yes, I think I will do 30. So this will be 5 over 30 
plus 3 over 30 gives us 8 over 30. Divide the top and bottom by 2, we get 4 over 15, which implies, take the reciprocal of that, the R equivalent here is 15 over 4. See so if we got that? Yep. So that seems reasonable. So this portion right here, I should have been writing some of these down. Hmm. Okay, so R412 is one is three. So this is three ohm here. That's seven ohm there. Yep, and then the total thing. So one thing to check with in, when you have um, resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance of two in parallel should be less than either of them. So this top part here was six. This bottom part was 10. And we found an equivalent of 15 fourths, which is a little bit less than four, which is less than six, which is the smaller of the two. So that seems reasonable. Okay, so now we got our R equivalent and we have R total over here. And so to find the R unknown, we have R equals R total minus R equivalent. Again, we found this R total by knowing the power and the voltage supplied. So our total was, what was it? I think I wrote that down somewhere, didn't I? Yep, right here, 27 over four. 27 over four minus 15 over four, which gives us 12 over four, which is a fancy way of saying three ohms again. Ah, very convenient. So I'm gonna write that up here, three ohms right there, okay. So now we've gotten that part. So we've got the first answer right here, unknown resistor, three ohms. So now what we need to do is we need to find the current going through this resistor right there. So my feelings is it's not gonna be a lot, but we need to be more specific than that. So we're gonna start by finding the total current leaving, I'm gonna use a technique called uh, the idea of voltage drop. So we start with 18 volts here. So I'm gonna assume that this side right here, 18 volts, I'm gonna assume this side right here, zero volt. And then the idea is as it, as the, um, I guess as you progress along the circuit, the voltage will drop until it gets down to zero. This is kind of the same idea as Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law, or Kirchhoff's current law. Um, but one of the other things we need to know is we need to know the, uh, let's see, current. So we can look at the entire circuit. And so V total equals I total R total. This is just Ohm's law, V equals I R. But I'm, I wrote total, so you know it's for the whole circuit here. So rearranging this, we have I, that's an I, equals V over R, these are still totals. So the total voltage will be 18. And we already decided that the total resistance was 27 over Four, yes, over 27 over four. I'm gonna write this 18 over one, 27 over four. This way you can see when you multiply by the reciprocals. This is just algebra. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's easy, just it's not complicated, but it does kind of be cumbersome. Okay, so we got 18 times four, which is two times nine times four, I know I could use a calculator, but this might actually be quicker. Three times nine, this gives us eight thirds. So we have eight thirds amps. That's the current, nope, there we go, going through it. Okay, so this is, oh, right here, 18 amps. And so we wanna find the voltage drop across this resistor. So to do that, the voltage drop is gonna be through V equals IR. Now this is a different VIR. This is for um, this resistor right here. So the voltage drop will be unknown, but we know that the voltage, is, the amp is gonna be 18 because, um, yes. No, 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 not 18. Eight thirds. There we go. We're gonna have eight thirds amps, 
multiply that by the resistor, which is 3, and the voltage drop then, cancel, cancel, will be 8 volts. So of the 18 volts we have available, we already lose 8 of them across this resistor. So at this point, we have 18 volts, and at this point then we have 10 volts, 18 minus, uh, 18 minus 8. And so we have 10 volts up here. Oh, I know, super messy, super messy. I apologize. Nope, need to get a better color. Red. So up here we have 10 volts, but also importantly down here we have 10 volts. Okay, so now we're gonna do this backwards, maybe. Hmm. So our goal here is then to find the voltage at this point. So we know we have zero volts here. We can backtrack that to right here to zero volts. And we know that this is three ohms equivalent, and this is seven ohms equivalent. So when they're together, since they're in series, we have an equivalent of, um, let's see here, 10 ohms. And so V equals IR, rearrange that, we have I equals VR. What I'm gonna find this time is current passing through this section right here. So that current is going to be V over R. So the voltage difference we have here is 10. 10, we divide by the total resistance, which is 10 ohms, and that gives us one amp. So we have one amp passing through this section here. Now just to kind of make sure this intuitively makes sense, let's look at the total of amps we have. We have a total of amps of 8 thirds, so almost three. And so about a third of them are passing through this section, which means two thirds are probably passed through that section. Which makes sense too, because up here we only have a total of six ohms resistance. So it makes sense that the more current will go through the branch with the less resistance. Okay, so now we know we have one amp in this branch here. One amp. I know, super messy. It's kind of the price I pay here. So now if we know one amp, we can find the voltage rise going this direction. So V equals IR. Amp is one. V or R is seven, and so one times seven will be seven volts. We have a seven volt rise here, so we have zero volts to seven volts. So now we have 10 volts here, seven volts here, both on each side of the 12 ohm resistor. And so if we look at this 12 ohm resistor now, come on over, trying to, try to look, find a small blank space, maybe up here. This will be my take it home color, ooh, green. So I equals V over R, Ohm's law, just rearranged. And then I'm going to write this delta there to show it a change in voltage. The difference in voltage will be 10 minus 7. So we have 3 volts. And the resistance here is 12 ohms. And so 3 divided by 12 will be 1 fourth amp which means that 3 4 amp will probably go through the top one because they have to eat up equal up to 12. Bum, bum, bum. Does that make sense? Yes, that seems reasonable. So the two answers here is, first answer was we wanted to find this resistor here, 3 ohms, and the other we wanted to find out what the voltage was through the 12 ohm resistor, and that right here is going to be 1 fourth amp. So to kind of recap what we did here, I know, super messy, and for that I apologize. These problems kind of get that way sometimes. The idea is they gave us power and they gave us some giant circuit. We found the um, current going through the whole thing. We reduced this mess of a resistor down to an equivalent resistance. And we found out what this original resistor had to be. From then, we used the idea of voltage rise across resistors to find out how much voltage was on each side of the resistor that we wanted to find the current through. And once we finally worked our way back from the left and from the right to both sides of the resistor, we were then just able to use Ohm's law to figure it out. So this isn't a, um, there's no real concept with this question, which is really overwhelmingly difficult, but there is lots of small things and this is, this is a pretty challenging question. So I hope that helped. I will see you next time.